Hello there and welcome to this Unity tutorial. Today we will be making a simple marble roller game. I am using Unity 5 and I assume that you have quite a bit of Unity knowledge before we start this. I am not going to be covering the very basics, you know, things like what components are and what a float is and things like that. So if you're in doubt, I'm sure that you can use Google uh, on the sideline or just watch some other videos first. But it's not going to be hard, so I'm sure you can follow along anyways. So, I've made a basic Unity project. This is the default scene. And the first thing we're going to do is to create a spear as the ball. So we create a spear here, and we just call it ball in the hierarchy, just to make it a bit more organized. And the first thing we want to do is to add a component to the ball called rigid body. What this component does is that it activates physics for the object so that the ball will act like a ball from the real world. You see if I add a, a cube here and drag it over the ball just below it and place it like that and then I just need the camera to face it like that and you see when I run the game the ball will fall, fall down like that using physics like a real ball so that's that's just what the rigid body does it's a pretty handy feature um, has lots of good uses so we've got the ball to fall now we need to, the ball to move so we add a component called a new script. I call this ball controller but you can call it whatever you want. I don't care about that. I like to call the things that requires user input for controllers. Um, keeps a good structure on that. So we've got the, the ball here and we want to give the ball a speed. Uh, so we make a new public float public because then the variable will be uh, editable from the unity editor and that's uh, really useful so I can show you that in a moment so let's say public float ball speed equals nothing because when I go here I can just adjust it from here so I'll just set it to 5 uh, for now so we need to get uh, the input axis and if you don't know what an input axis is think of it like a PlayStation or an Xbox or whatever controller where you have this uh, this pin that you can move left and right and up and down but you don't have keys for them you have two axes you have an X axis and an Y axis and these axes can either be negative or positive for example when I move the stick to the right it will be positive and if I move to the left what the hell? Oh, anyways, the the x value will be negative, and we'll take advantage of that. Uh, so we'll set up two variables: one for the x-axis, one for the y-axis, and we'll call them float xp equals input dot get axis. In this case, the horizontal axis. Also, the y-speed equals input dot get axis vertical so you might be wondering what are those two axes where can I adjust them or rename them or whatever and uh, that's pretty easy you can do that if you press edit in the unity editor and just head over to project settings and then input you'll see here are all the inputs that you can set up for your game for example uh, the horizontal axis here you see the negative button is left and the positive button is right you can also set up an alternative button for example A and D so the player has more opinions on uh, no, no not more uh, has multiple options on uh, on which keys he can use for the horizontal or vertical or whatever you want so that's that's a pretty nice way to do that I highly re strongly uh, recommend it so let's go back to the editor, no, to the, the script editor. So now we've got the XP, the 
y speed from the axis, and now we need to actually move the ball. And we do that through the component we added before, the rigid body. So we need to get that component. Let's just assign it to a variable for now. A rigid body, because it's a rigid body. Let's just call it body equals get component rigid body. You need to put in what type of object you uh, type of component you're getting inside of these, uh, or else uh, the editor won't know what you're trying to get. So we've got the rigid body. Now we just need to rotate it uh, in the x speed and y speed. So we say body dot add torque, and here you can add some rotation to the ball as a vector. So for example if I wanted to rotate the ball along the x-axis I'd add a new vector uh, where I'd put 10 in this x-axis for example then the ball would rotate uh, along the x-axis. But in this case we have two uh, two axes uh, so we'll just add a new vector vector 3 and we go x-speed 0 and then y-speed here. You might wonder why I don't put uh, y speed in the y in the vector, but that's because in Unity y isn't uh, up and down; it's the height, so it's uh, in the sky or down the whatever. <laughs> you get my point. Um, I hope. So if we run this now, uh, let's just expand the ground here a bit like this. You'll see that the ball is moving. That's actually fine. What we need to do now is to assign or apply the ball speed to this. So we just multiply the vector by the ball speed. And what we also need to multiply with is the time dot delta time constant or not constant variable it is. What this does is to balance the speed no matter how many frames per second you have. Because you know if you run this game on a slow computer then the frames per second will probably be uh, lower than if you were run it on a super computer. And if the frames per second is high then this update method will be run more times than on a slow computer. And therefore uh, the, the torque will also be applied multiple times, uh, m more times on a faster computer, oh my gosh, than on a slow computer. So what this does is to stabilize the movement, no matter how how your frames per second is. So uh, that's pretty useful. And uh, so no matter if we have a fast computer or a slow computer or even a phone that runs this game it will stabilize it so that the speed will be the same no matter what. So let's just see how this looks. Oh it's so slow. Let's just speed this up a bit. Let's say 50 instead. Yeah that's better. That's better. Might be a bit slow too. Let's say 250. Should be great. Yeah that that might be it. I think that's that's pretty good. So, just to see what's going on, let's assign two materials to, to the ball. No, one material to the ball and one material to the ground. Just so we can see that the ball actually rotates. So, I'll create a new folder for the textures. And another one for the materials. And I found some textures in here. Let's see, game development textures. I thought this might fit for the ball, and this might fit for the ground. There we go. So I'll just create two new materials, ball and ground, and you see here. Uh, you just need to drag the textures from here and to this little tab over here. Then it will bind the texture to the material 
because you can't apply a texture directly to a to a uh, mesh. You need to uh, to give it a material first, and the material is found inside of the mesh renderer here. So if you expand that little thing here, you'll see uh, there's a default material on it, but you can just click this little button, and then you can change the material. I'll change it to the ball here. The same thing we do with the ground. We assign the texture. We go to the box here, and we set the material to the ground. So that's look that looks a bit better. Uh, it should do, and we should also be able to see that the ball actually rotates. That's nice. So now it's time to adjust the camera. So let's add a new script here called camera motor. Um, yeah. Go ahead and open it up. And you'll see here, we don't need to use the start function this time. Um, but what we need for the, ca the camera to do is to look at a game object in third person and be distant from it. So we need to set a game object and we need to tell how far away we need to be from that game object. So we go public game object target. This is the game object we want to target. And we say public float x offset, y offset, and c offset. So this is the distance we want to be away from the object, specifically given along the axis. So let's see here in update, we need to say the transform the position. This is the position of the camera's uh, game object. Uh, it should equal the target uh, that position. Why can't we say oh transform that position? There we go. <laughs> so now the camera is exactly in the target position. We need to make it move a bit away from it. Therefore, we add a new vector tree with the x offset the, uh, and you know the other offsets too. C offset. There we go. So now the camera is a bit away from from the target object. So you'll see here the camera motor will pop off with, with these, and we drag the ball to the target game object. And then the camera will target the ball. And as offset, we go five here along the x-axis and five along the y-axis. So we get it a bit far away and we get a bit height of the camera. So let's see how that looks. You see, it has five along the x-axis and five in the height here. The thing is that the camera does not look at the ball. So we need to add another line in here and just say transform dot look at. And then you can put in a vector here and then the ball will look at that vector. So we just put in the vector of the position of the target object. In this case the ball's position. So we say target the transform that position and then the the camera will look at the ball. So simple as that. So if we play this now, you see that the camera will will tackle the ball and actually move around like like a ball does. And that's it. Now you've actually made a Marvel roller game. Now you can go make a fancy level. For example like this. So, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you uh, are interested in learning more, be sure to visit my website, it's uh, in the description. There are many tutorials, way more than on this YouTube channel. There are also many text-based tutorials, so that you don't have to pause the video and do uh, breaks in your work all the time. I think personally it's easier to read the text tutorial than it is to watch the video. So if you're up for that, be sure to check it out. And I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. Let's just see how this looks. Oh, that's pretty. No, I'm falling. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching.